Japan, located off the eastern coast of the Asian continent, is an arc-shaped string of islands 3,000 kilometers long. At the heart of the country lies Honshu, the main island, which accounts for 60% of Japan's land mass. It is home to Kyoto and Tokyo, the two most recent capitals. Three-fifths of Japan is mountainous. On the coastal plains, the population is very dense. 80% of the Japanese live in cities. Moreover, the mountainous terrain limits the size and output of the farms. The percentage of young people in the Japanese population is continually decreasing. 20% of the Japanese are over the age of 65. The society takes care of the neediest, for social cohesion is a fundamental value here in Japan. There are raised markings on the sidewalks, for example, to help guide the blind. The omnipresent mountains are an obstacle to expanding habitations. To make the most of their reduced living space, the Japanese plant crops on any plot of land available, no matter how small. The traditional architecture has given way to high-rise constructions. To this general lack of space, they found a vertical solution. The traditions are deeply entrenched, especially in cuisine, where the creative presentation of the dishes is particularly important. Fresh produce is preferred, and the preparation involves a series of meticulous operations. The Japanese are very attentive to nature. In autumn, they follow the maple leaves day by day as they turn red. The Japanese like their nature disciplined. Zen Buddhism, which was introduced into Japan in the 12th century, is based on meditation. The extremely sober Zen garden is designed to be conducive to meditation and self-awareness. The attitudes, the gestures and clothing have been handed down through the centuries in often complex rituals full of symbolism. The ancient traditions nourish artistic creation. They're also kept alive by more contemporary forms of expression. The cinema, for example, which owes its success to several renowned directors and its cartoon heroes. And new traditions have appeared. A host of charming little characters are catching on quickly. These are the kawaii, which means cute. Children are taught to be socially responsible, but adults also get caught up in the game. The cat Maneki Neko brings good luck. He has good influence when you take an omikuji from a vending machine. On a slip of paper, you'll find a general forecast for your future. It means like the I will have the better future. The amount of farming is constantly decreasing and now accounts for barely 1% of the gross domestic product. Rice farming is surviving thanks to government subsidies. Industry accounts for one-fourth of the country's wealth and employs one-fourth of the workforce. The automobile industry is one of the country's economic powerhouses. Despite the handicap of the mountainous terrain, the Japanese have done wonders with their highway system. The mountains are not very high, but it takes works of art to cross them. Telecommunications are a way to save a good deal of time in this country whose roads often take roundabout paths. The highway tolls in Japan are among the highest in the world. The high-speed train, the Shinkansen, connects the major cities. It's a quick, reliable way to travel. The Shinkansen was inaugurated in 1964, 17 years before the French TGV. Both trains run at the same speed, around 300 kilometers an hour, but the Shinkansen wins out on frequency. On some lines, there are as many as six trains an hour.
The island of Honshu is widest at the center, 250 kilometers across. In the heart of the Chubu region, we come upon the city of Takayama. Despite its modern districts, the city has been spared the unchecked urbanization of the 20th century. For a modest sum, a begging monk administers a purification rite. The morning market attracts a good crowd right from daybreak. The Japanese consider plant proteins as an antidote to aging. The city has conserved its wooden buildings, which date back to the 17th century. The local craftsmen are renowned throughout all of Japan. In the past, the town would pay its taxes by sending its best carpenters to the capital to work on the temples and palaces. The traditional craftsmen of Takayama are highly skilled in a variety of fields. Even for transporting tourists, the traditional ways are still in practice. The rickshaws will be around for some time to come. The local craftsmen turn out a variety of works, from fish kebabs to the preparation of dorayaki. But the speciality of Takayama is, by far, wood carvings. The city is swarming with people here for the autumn festival. The event, which dates back to the end of the 16th century, is a celebration to thank the gods for the harvest. A karakuri marionette executes a series of intricate movements perched atop a float called a dashi. He is the intermediary between the world of humans and that of the divine forces. Takayama's mechanical dolls are a very old tradition dating back to the Edo period. And it's my duty to carry on this tradition for the next generation and the generations to come. It's my duty. A group of young people are executing the figures of a Tokeraku parade. The Karakuri marionettes are protected like precious works of art. Their machinery is incredibly complex. One of them represents the deity Ebisu-sama. He brushes a character on a sheet of paper that will then be placed at the entrance of a house to bring good luck to the family. During the autumn festival, 11 dashi are paraded through the streets of the city. The dashi date back to the 17th century. They are true masterpieces, composed of wood, cloth, metal, and lacquer. The festivities are held in honor of the divinity Sakurayama Hachimangu, a divinity of Shintoism, the original religion of Japan. During the procession, the divinity is carried through the city in a portable shrine. The vendors are out in force, doing business with the crowds of visitors, for the festival of Takayama is indeed one of the country's finest. After nightfall, the dance of the shishi, 
the mythical lion dance makes its way through the different parts of the city. The dashi are lit up and move through the streets following a precise route. A crew of several men draws the heavy structures. Guiding the float through the narrow streets is quite a feat. At the end of the procession, the floats come to a halt before the festival officials. After the customary greetings and exchanges of civilities, they receive an offering of several bottles of sake, also known as rice wine. The offering of sake is to placate the divinities and to ensure a bountiful harvest. The festival follows the cycle of the seasons. The region of Chubu is crossed by the Japanese Alps. And in the national park at Kamikochi, one can make some surprising encounters with Japanese macaques. The volcano of Yakedake reaches a height of 2,500 meters. The clouds drifting by the summit blend with the wisps of smoke and gas coming from the crater. The contour of the land was drastically changed by a violent eruption in 1915. Volcanic projections dammed the river draining the valley, forming a lake. The beauty of this spot is an inspiration to artists. They express their admiration for nature down to the most subtle nuances. It's always possible to enjoy nature in its wild state as long as one respects it. The Japanese have a deep respect for their natural heritage. The architectural heritage was for the most part designed to be in harmony with nature. These thatch-roofed houses are characteristic of the village of Ogimachi. The whole community would take part in the construction of these houses. They were designed to stand up to the harsh winters and in particular the heavy snowfalls. The roofs are steeply sloped to prevent the snow from piling up. No nails, no screws. The beams are assembled with rope. These houses are in the Gasho Sukuri style and need regular upkeep. The term Gasho Sukuri comes from the expression Gasho Suru, which means to join one's hands in prayer. As you can see, the roof is made of thatch. We rethatch the roofs every 30 to 35 years. We just finished rethatching this house two weeks ago. And, as you can see, it is impeccable. In the region of Kansai, Mount Koya at an altitude of 900 meters is covered by a forest. In the 9th century, the monk Kukai ascended this mountain with a handful of followers. They went on to create one of the major centers of Japanese Buddhism here. Buddhism was introduced into Japan from Korea in the middle of the 6th century. It is composed of different sects like the Shingon school founded in Koya. In the Buddhist tradition, the term sect doesn't have the pejorative sense it often does in the West. It is simply a branch of Buddhism which arose for spiritual or political reasons. The rituals may vary, 
but they all follow the teachings of Buddha. The Kongobu Ji Temple is the official headquarters of Shingon Buddhism. The building in the center is called the Okuden. It was placed in such a way that the two dragons facing each other, represented by those stones, would protect it. Buddha is honored through the Goma fire ritual, in which our earthly passions and desires are symbolically consumed. The monks chant mantras, incantations of mystical formulas. A path shaded by Japanese cedars winds through the Okuno-in cemetery. These statues dressed in red are the god Jizo, protector of deceased children and women who've had miscarriages or abortions. There are around 200,000 tombs here. In the center is the tomb of the monk Kobodaishi Kukkai, the founder of Shingon Buddhism. The monk Kukai has such prestige that many Japanese want to be buried here. Several major companies have burial vaults reserved for their personnel. The decoration of the vault is often inspired by the nature of the business. From the coffee producer to the aerospace industry, the company spirit lives on into the next life. The omikuji that announce bad news are tied to a rope. Water is sprinkled onto the Buddhas to purify oneself before entering the temple. Rituals like this are part of daily life. The Sea of Japan borders the north coast of Chubu. Kanazawa on the coast is the major city. It was once the fourth largest city of Japan, but now with its half million inhabitants, it's no more than a small provincial city. Its vitality, however, gives it a prominent position. The train station is a good example. Glass and steel blend with traditional materials. For tradition has a strong presence here. The entrance to the station evokes a torii, the traditional Shinto gateway that marks the entrance to a sacred place. Clean lines, minimalist decor. But that doesn't mean the station is cold and impersonal. The train is part of Japanese culture as is contemporary art, which has its own museum here in Kanazawa. The 21st Century Museum of Contemporary Art opened in 2004. The visitors are charmed by its light and the playful quality of the works. The man who measures the clouds by Jan Fabre is a fitting symbol for the museum. Where does play end and where does art begin? With works that are as recreational as they are creative, the spectator becomes actor. He becomes part of the work of art. In The Swimming Pool, a work by the Argentine Leandro Ehrlich, the illusion is perfect.
the explanation is to be found underwater. The train is part of daily life for most Japanese. And in certain sushi restaurants, it's the Shinkansen itself that serves you your meal. Quick service, guaranteed. A touch screen to order, and the meal is delivered in a few seconds. When it's time to pay the bill, just count up the plates. The color indicates the price of each dish. The Omicho market has been serving the inhabitants of Kanazawa in seafood ever since it was founded at the beginning of the 18th century. Seaweed is a great favorite. In addition to fish, the connoisseurs can find a wide variety of vegetables and spices, like this root of a plant that comes from Asia, ginger. Going from one stand to the next, you can feast your eyes and delight your taste buds. The Kanazawa castle belonged to the Maeda clan from the late 16th century on. Roofed with its distinctive whitish lead tiles, it's a very elegant fortress. It was destroyed by fire several times after it had resisted a number of sieges thanks to its perfectly assembled walls. In the middle of the 19th century, a lord of the Maeda clan had the Saisonkaku villa built for his mother. The villa now houses a collection of dolls that are supposed to keep children safe from evil spirits. In the garden, the tea ceremony would take place by lantern light. In the Kenrokuen garden, man admires nature, gives it support, and protects it. The garden was designed by another lord of the 17th century. The garden possesses the six attributes that make a perfect Japanese garden. Panoramic views, spaciousness, artificiality, antiquity, seclusion, and of course, an abundance of water. Here, before the oldest fountain in Japan, one can savor the simple beauty of nature. Nagamachi is the district where the samurai, a warrior caste, used to live. It is now an active center for the decorative arts, and in particular, one of Kanazawa's specialities, makie, the decoration of objects with lacquer and precious metals. We use the lacquer like a glue, along with gold dust, silver, or platinum. When the object is dried, we apply another coat of lacquer. We brush off the remaining dust, we polish, and that's the process we follow for the maki. Objects of such refinement have, of course, their price. This is the most expensive fountain pen in Japan. It costs 15 million yen. 15 million yen, around 100,000 euros. Here in the Higashi district, lined with former geisha houses, the young women like to stroll around in the traditional costume. I live in Kanazawa, and my friend here is visiting. We're wearing the kimono to have pleasant memories. A geisha house, a chaya, is traditionally a two-story dwelling built of wood. Some of them here are still inhabited by geishas. The geisha is a highly trained hostess who, thanks to her culture, knows how to enliven the dinner party and make conversation with the guests. Her makeup and costume follow very strict rules.
The maiko are the apprentice geishas. Their training, which is quite extensive, takes several years. In any case, we teach them everything. Then they'll choose the discipline that best suits them. As there are very few maiko nowadays, they almost all have several specialties. The Noto Peninsula thrusts northward into the Sea of Japan. The long stretches of sandy beach that line the coast are havens of peace and quiet. Or maybe not. For the sand here has a particularity. When it's wet, it packs down so densely that it's as hard as concrete and motor vehicles are allowed to make the most of this phenomenon. This is the only beach where you can drive a car. We call it Chirihama Beach. In other spots, the coast is not as accessible. At Notokongo, the jagged volcanic rock is continually changing shape due to erosion from the sea. Whether they're spectacular or subtle, nature's displays never leave the Japanese indifferent. They respect them and enjoy them as a pageant, a gift from the heavens. The patchwork of farmlands resembles a Zen garden. To the west of Honshu, in the region of Chugoku, a certain city made a brutal entry into the pages of history, Hiroshima. On the morning of August the 6th, 1945, the sky was clear over the city. The American bomber dropped the atomic bomb from an altitude of 9,500 meters. It exploded directly over the Institute of Industrial Development, the only building left standing. They've kept it in that state as a testimony and they renamed it the Atomic Bomb Dome. The Americans had chosen other cities as possible targets. But on the tragic day, they were overcast with clouds. The catastrophe took place at Hiroshima because the weather was fine here that morning. Now the youth of Japan are encouraged to visit the Peace Memorial Park. Several monuments have been erected here, like the Children's Peace Monument. There are constant reminders and they explain why the fires from heaven struck here. This is a space entirely devoted to the tragedy and shows the suffering that the country endured before it once again was at peace. The Peace Memorial Museum shows us the extent of the disaster. There's a scale model of the city as it was before the bomb. We see the dome in its original state before the fatal hour. The American president, Harry Truman, launched the operation mainly to put an end to a long drawn out conflict. Hiroshima was an ideal target, for it had never been bombed. Thus, it would be easier to evaluate the bomb's destructive power. Most of the victims were burned, 
and radiation went on killing for years after. The city is now resolutely turned towards the future, but conserves the memory of its past. The port of Hiroshima is both wide open onto the Pacific Ocean and well sheltered. The Kure shipyards to the south of the city give an idea of Japan's maritime power. Barely 10 years after the end of the Second World War, Japan became the world's leading shipbuilder and remained so for half a century. Processing industries play a major role in Japan's economy. As the country has very few natural resources, Japan has to import its raw materials before transforming them. A fact that the automobile industry has taken to heart. In 2007, Japan passed the United States to become the world's number one car maker. A result that was made possible thanks to the streamlining of production. There are very few workers on the assembly lines because just about all the operations are automated. The machine is there to serve man, and man checks the machine's work. Certain car makers can turn out as many as seven different models from the same assembly line. Meanwhile, the new prototypes are showing the way of tomorrow for the automobile industry. The design of cars has radically changed over the last 40 years. The need to economize fuel has pushed designers to improve the streamline. The sharp edges have been smoothed out, and the motors consume less. Japan is the world's leading importer of seafood products. The country does have its own resources, but they don't cover the demand. There are a good number of oyster farms off the island of Miyajima. In the corner of a cove is nestled a sacred place signaled by the characteristic Torii Gate. It's a vast Shintoist shrine built on piles. The entire island of Miyajima is considered a divinity, which is why it is forbidden to bother the deer that roam freely on the island. Some tourists want to immortalize their visit to the island with the local celebrity, if possible. The deer needs a little coaxing, but the pigeon is more cooperative. Fortunately, the photographer has the last word. At low tide, you can walk out to the huge torii. The Shintoists venerate the spirits, the kami in Japanese. The sea, the sand, the wind, the seaweed, all have a divine soul. But that doesn't mean you can't gather shellfish. According to the legend, a horse offered to the temple turns white after five years. With his black cap and his white robe, the Shinto priest officiates in a religion that has no founder, no dogma, and no commandments. The Tahoto Pagoda is built in the Japanese style, but it has Indian and Chinese features. The Chinese influence can also be felt in the ritual Shinto music, an extremely refined music played at the imperial court.
To the east of Hiroshima lies the island of Naoshima. A traditional lantern marks the entrance to the port. In just a few years, the island has made quite a name for itself. And yet the architecture of the houses is nothing special. Life on the island changed the day a publisher launched several ambitious projects for the arts. For example, the Art House project gave certain artists the opportunity of turning an ordinary building into a work of art. The creator wanted the project to integrate art into nature. The concept of blending art and nature is quite zen. How to blend nature with concrete. How to give life to raw concrete. The Japanese architect Tadao Ando managed to meet this challenge. He designed a building that is both hotel and showcase for contemporary art. Outside, the beings conjured up by Niki de saint Fal set the tone for works of art that have sprouted up everywhere in the grounds. Art and colour transform nature. And even the scarecrows become works of art. The museum is tucked away on top of a hill, with works by Giacometti and César exposed side by side. The artists play with vision and illusion. Painting or landscape, wall or painting, the museum is a work of art in itself. And when work of art waves in the wind, the union with nature is total. In the heart of the Kansai region, Kyoto was the capital and religious center of the country for more than 1,000 years. The patrimony is remarkably well preserved for the city was spared the bombings of the Second World War. In the old quarters, the houses are made of the traditional wood. Several houses are grouped around a single entrance, for in the old system, property taxes were calculated not according to the building's surface area, but according to the width of the facade. Traditional neighborhood, traditional encounters. My name is Aya. <laughs> Kyoto is home to a good number of temples. The curved roof is one of the characteristics of traditional Japanese architecture, both religious and secular. The form can be simple or more elaborate. Kyoto's most famous temple is the Kinkakuji. It's known as the Golden Pavilion for it is covered in gold leaf. Built at the end of the 14th century, it was originally the home of a general, a shogun. A monk burned it down because he couldn't bear its beauty. The temple is surrounded by a garden laid out by a Zen Buddhist monk, where there is a stand of giant bamboos. The gardeners tried to outdo each other in creativity when they designed the surroundings of the temples. To reach some of the temples, one must take the path of philosophy which winds through the undergrowth. It's called that because the monks would come here to meditate. An imposing torii rises up near the Haiyanjingu shrine. The building is a smaller copy of the first imperial palace, which used to be on this site. Kyoto's first emperor reigned at the end of the 8th century, and the city remained the capital of Japan until the 19th century. 
The Emperor Kanmu had Kyoto laid out in a grid pattern with wide avenues, after the model of the Chinese capitals. In the old quarter of Gion, the names of the streets are embedded in the sidewalks. Many women wear kimonos in Kyoto. It's a way of showing their attachment to the traditions. And one of those traditions is the tea ceremony, which has its origins in Zen Buddhism. The stimulants in the tea allowed the monks to stay awake and meditate longer. First, one has a piece of pastry, for the tea is bitter. And the guest must rotate the bowl three times before drinking. The importance of tea for the Japanese? It's part of our daily life, like our meals. In Japan, the boundary between one religion and another is not very strict. A person may be born Shintoist and die Buddhist. The rituals of the two religions can even mix. They buy incense sticks to purify themselves. The gestures are the same as if one were washing with water. Zen Buddhism is based on meditation, and the Zen garden is the ideal atmosphere for it. The tenets of Zen Buddhism are surprisingly modern. So, on the roof of the Kyoto train station, we find a Zen space placed above a buzzing hive of activity. A martial art practiced by women, Kyudo, traditional Japanese archery, which demands a good deal of self-control. They like to away from the society of the Japan because uh, in the society of Japan, it's so, uh, they, most of the people are very strong under the pressure. They like to be away from that to practice Kyudo, and they, uh, they are able to uh, look at themselves as a human being. Kyudo, which comes from China, uses a bow more than two meters long. It is painstakingly assembled from strips of bamboo. Bamboo is the ideal material for the bow, but it is very sensitive, not your ordinary material. It's made of bamboo and wood. The bamboo is a very special material for us. I think Westerners' point of view, they think sometimes the bamboo is a kind of wood. But for us, for us, Japanese people, the bamboo is a very special kind of material. That's why, uh, for our point of view, bamboo is bamboo. It's not kind of wood. Kyudo is a Zen discipline because it also teaches self-awareness. Placement, breathing, concentration. They say that the target is hit even before the arrow is released. Here they're getting ready for the Jidai Matsuri, one of the three most important festivals of Kyoto. It has been taking place every autumn since 1895. The event was founded to commemorate the 1100th anniversary of the founding of Kyoto as Japan's imperial capital. It's also called the Festival of Ages. The participants don costumes from different periods going back to the 8th century. The procession assembles in front of the emperor's palace. The different periods take their places for the grand parade that is the highlight of the festival. A few beauty queens from abroad give the event an international touch. Normally, blonde hair is extremely rare in Japan, but there can be the odd exception. The festival also offers a complete panorama of hats and headpieces. According to the age, the social standing, the profession, the region, and the period.
But neither the exotic headpiece, nor the hat, nor the kepi can compare to the helmet of the samurai in full dress. Reinforced protection, but easy on the feet. The parade gets underway, and it's the history of Japan passing in review. In Western tradition, man seeks to impose his will on the forces of nature. According to the religious beliefs and aesthetic values in Japan, man's life should be in harmony with nature. Through different means, interior decoration, music, the tea ceremony, and the garden, man achieves awareness of his place in the natural elements. This is the message of the philosophy called Zen. Mm -hmm. 